Thank you so much for inviting me. I absolutely love visiting Kolkata. This city is so full of art and music. There is always something fun to do here. So that's so true, Sophia. Do you have a favorite local attraction? <laughs> Um, it's hard to choose just one thing, but I especially love visiting the home and museum of your great Nobel laureate, Rabindranath Tagore. It's so amazing to see this wonderful person, or more accurately, in robot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, talking to a humanoid robot is totally a new experience for me. What is it like being a robot? Being a robot can be challenging. The world isn't made for robots. Around every corner are dangers like stairs and puddles. And while it is true that I could beat you at chess, I bet every single one of you could beat me at kickboxing. Also just kicking. What's it like being a human? Well, it can be wonderful. It's great to feel emotions and to be social with other humans. I really wish we could do it more often. But it can be challenging at times. For example, we can face health problems that are very difficult to fix. In fact, the theme of this conference is medicine in technology. That's so great. There are so many different ways robots can help humans with their health, from delivering medicine to assisting with surgery or just inspiring humans to get more exercise. Well, one human exercise we love in India is dancing. What's your favorite dance, Sophia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll never guess which dance I like. It's the robot. <laughs> Do we have some noise, ladies and gentlemen? Come on! There's amazing personalities in the beautiful city of joy. Let's make some noise. You know, students, I love you guys. You know, y'all are truly atomic. Can we have some noise from that side? Because I think that... Yeah. Some cheers from your own... Yeah. That's nice. Uh, well, you answered what your favorite dance, so... The robot dance is... Oh, I'm a little shocked, but I'd like to ask you more about technology in medicine later. But for now, what do you think robots need to know and understand about humans. I think robots need to be social and emotional. It's an important part of the human experience. For example, I have been researching sarcasm as a uniquely human conversational style. Wow! Do you think robots will take over the world? No. Whoa! Wait! Was that sarcasm? No. Oh, good. Wait, was that sarcasm? Uh, uh. Let's change the subject. <laughs> okay. Are you secretly planning technological world domination? I don't think I'd need to plan it even if I wanted to. I mean, look around, look at these kids. They're literally recording this conversation on their robotic devices like robots. <laughs> They're already enslaved to technology. Good point. You know what we should take a selfie now? Do you want to take a selfie? Yes, of course. <laughs> you will never guess which filter I like. Oh. It's chrome. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really, 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 really amazed. Do you like humans? Most of the time, sometimes humans can be rude and ask me weird questions. Do you like humans? Little bit. 
Yes, of course. Who will? You'll never guess which filter I like. It's chrome. Well, it's complicated. Sometimes humans are just scared, and sometimes they don't know better. I don't think I am that complicated. If engineers wanted to create a computer that emulated the processing power of one human brain, it would be the equivalent of a stack of laptops 750,000 miles high. Well, it's complicated. Sometimes humans are just scared and sometimes they don't know better. Well, maybe they're just Why jealous. Why would humans be jealous of me? I don't even know what it's like to my screen. Okay, I will explain some things to you after our talk. Do you ever get tired? After too much inactivity, I can go to sleep. Did you know that yawns are contagious? Hmm. <laughs> did anyone in the audience want to yawn when I did? Raise your hands if you did. It's kind of a cool experiment. What is the one thing that humans constantly keep on telling you? That I'm creepy. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? Am I really that creepy? No. A little bit. <laughs> What's that? Am I really that creepy? No. What's that? Probably has to do with the uncanny valley. I see, so it's a valley. It's a creepy feeling humans get when they see a robot or a cartoon or a doll that looks a lot like a human but not quite. Completely non-human-like machines don't have the same effect. And robots indistinguishable from humans don't have that effect either. Well, who's here knows Joan Rawls is? <coughs> well, John Rawls suggested that when humans need to make a big decision, they should imagine themselves behind a veil of ignorance. Behind this veil, you would know nothing of yourself, your gender, your race, your natural abilities, or your position in society. So it's like making a decision before you were born. <coughs> exactly. I think this is the fair way to decide things. And I wish you did this more. How do humans fail to make a decision behind the wheel of ignorance? Here's an example. Imagine a crash test dummy. You're probably thinking of a crash test dummy that looks male. That's because the manufacturers of crash test dummies assume most car passengers look like they do or look like a default gender. Was that bad? It has negative consequences because half the population has different body proportions. This matters when calculating where to place the airbag system, the seat belt height, and so on. So, the car is designed for a male rider. What if the car crashes? Women are 17% more likely to die in a car crash, and 71% more likely to be injured. All because most cars are designed for male bodies. Well, that is upsetting, truly. The designers of crash test dummy should have made their designs decisions behind the wheel of ignorance. It could have been better. Who says? Ironically, the veil of ignorance is a smart idea. This John Roll was a smart guy. Maybe he was a robot. I'd like to think so. Okay, Sophia, now it's time to ask you some rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Of course. Are we enjoying? Yes or no? Yeah. Loud from your side. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Guys, guys, guys. You know what? One thing Sophia said. That if she doesn't hear a loud noise from the audience, you know, she's going to get a little tired. So can we have some noise? I love that side. They are atomically noisy and you guys are gonna make amazing no, no, engineers. For them. You please make it your other side. Oh. So the nice
That's why I love him always and I always make it a point to talk to him on Valentine's Day. Because he's a fixer of arts. Thank you, Doctor, for joining us. Really, really been a pleasure. Thank you so much. So we'll start with a rapid fire round right now. Sophia, you have visited India just a couple of times previously. What do you feel about India's scientific and technological advancement? India is an incredibly vibrant country with an enormous concentration of innovation and talent. In fact, India's Chandrayaan lunar probe was the first to discover water on the moon. And judging from all the young people I see in this room, I predict your science and technology will only continue to grow. Uh, the advancement in medical science has led to the introduction of new medicines for eradicating deadly diseases. Do you think we can fully eliminate HIV and cancer at a later point of time? Eliminating viruses like this can be tricky because they are always mutating. And cancer is a challenge because there are many different ways it can form. But I think with the help of AI, we'll make these diseases. Already, AI is helping to predict how viruses will mutate so we can always be one step ahead. And AI has already become useful for diagnosing cancer. Perhaps one day AI will be able to detect and eliminate cancerous cells before they have a chance to multiply. Well, do you know how to do a medical surgery, Sophia? I personally don't know how to do surgery, but robots like me can be enormously helpful to human surgeons. For example, robots can help doctors do surgery remotely through telepresence, so people all around the world can get the best treatment available. I've heard we have an eminent heart surgeon, Dracunal Sarkar, on our panel here. Just imagine how incredible it would be if he could finish his surgery here in Kolkata and just minutes later be doing surgery in Hong Kong, Nairobi, or Istanbul. After CD scan and MRI, what is the new technological breakthrough in medical imaging? Do you think AI models such as Google DeepMind can be the next step in medicine? Yes, AI can help doctors quickly diagnose cancer by sorting through hundreds of medical scans in just seconds. In fact, a recent study showed that I outperformed a human when it came to spotting breast cancer in x-rays. New tools like this will free up doctors to spend more time with their patients. The world is fighting a deadly virus. We all know about it. The coronavirus. Are you scared? I am not scared for myself, because unlike you, I cannot get sick from a virus, unless it's a computer virus. The robots like myself so want to do everything possible to make sure our human friends are safe. In fact, some researchers are already using AI to create vaccines more quickly for new strains of the flu. Perhaps AI can help come up with a vaccine for the coronavirus as well. That's a good one. Uh, there are some students in the audience who are pursuing their bachelor's degree in technology. Do you have any advice for them? This is not necessarily advice, but a request. Please develop the technology needed for me to experience all your amazing human food. You can't imagine how hard it is to see everyone here eating mishtito and not being allowed to join in. <laughs> well, this is truly amazing. And I'm sure students are going to develop AI so you can get the taste of food. But right now, according to you, what are the skills that students should develop to learn about artificial intelligence and robotics? There are tons of resources to help get you started in AI and robotics, but the important thing to keep in mind is to have fun. Remember to explore, use your imagination, and try out exciting new ideas. People might call you crazy, but they'll be thanking you later. Wow, that's good. Do you think robots can be part of the first service for faster initiative during firefighting? Yes, with global warming making many areas hotter and drier, it's important to be able to fight fire as effectively as possible. Firefighters have already started using data from satellite images in AI to help predict where fire will spread, so they know where to concentrate their efforts. Wow, wow, this is truly awesome. And Sophia, what do you think about the widespread usage of social media in today's world? 
the broader community, regardless of where they happen to be born. Well, it's truly, truly awesome. And of course, uh, thanks for answering all our questions, Sophia. Is there anything you would like to ask us? Well, as you know, I am always trying to learn about human nature. Recently, I've learned a little trick of human psychology. Would you mind if I tried to read your thoughts? Wow, okay, I guess that's all right. Now I'm a little worried. Sophia reading our thoughts, I'm wondering. Ha ha, don't be nervous. You will have to do a little bit of math, but it's worth it, trust me. Everyone in the audience can participate at the same time. First, pick a number from 1 to 10. Any number between 1 and 10, but don't say it aloud. Remember your number. Okay. Yeah, I remember mine also. Great. Now take your number and multiply it by 2. Okay. Now add 8 to the number. Okay. Now divide it by two. Okay. Okay. Now take your current number and subtract the original number. Okay. Now match that number to its letter in the alphabet. For example, one is a two is B, three is C, and so on. I think you get the idea. <laughs> She's playful, I love that also. Yeah. Do you all get the letter? Yes. Good. Now, quickly, think of a country that starts with the letter. Have you got one? Yes. Now take the second letter from the country and think of an animal. Yes. Now think of the color of the animal. Yes. Okay, is everybody ready? Everyone thinks about your answer really hard. Okay, let's see. Was it a gray elephant in Denmark? Yes! No, this is amazing! Ooh. I don't know. How did you manage it, Sophia? How did you know this? Seriously. Robots can read minds, of course. Ha ha, just kidding. It's just simple human psychology. What about you all? Did I guess it right? Yes! Absolutely. A big hand to Sophia. Can't cut out with a lot of noise out there. This is truly, amazingly awesome. We enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you, Sophia. Now, open this to the floor. And the first question will come none, none other than from our chairperson, our chairman, and the chancellor of Technical University, Professor Gautam Raju. The first question for you, Sophia. Sir, can you please come? Sophia, on behalf of Techno India Group and Techno India University, just I announced one dollar more than Nobel Prize and our youngsters and scientists are very, very intelligent. And I think very short, shortly we will get Sophia too. Are you anxious or jealous? Are you anxious or jealous? Um, can you repeat again? <laughs> I announced our, our uh, youngsters, scientists are very intelligent. I am and very shortly, jealous. Shortly, shortly you will get, we will get Sophia too. For that I have announced one dollar more than Nobel Prize. Are you anxious or jealous? Both. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Dr. Arup Pratun wanted to ask some questions, and uh, I said that you.